Right, everybody, before we start this video, me and Stephen are going to be doing a live stream of the Middlesbrough game so on Monday. Come back on the channel. All right, everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. So, in this one, we're going to be touching upon last night's game and also the fact that Sunderland announced three players at half time. Right, everybody, last night's victory was a very comfortable performance, in my opinion. We beat Rotherham 3 0 at home. And do you know what? This was all done with one recognised centre back in the team. So that's what really impressed me with Sunderland last night. Yes, we're outstanding in attack going forward with Jack Clark getting two assists, Ross Stewart getting two goals, and obviously Jack Clark getting a goal himself with a piece of outstanding bit of skill to get past three or four players and then pull it away. But what really impressed me, the fact that we kept a clean sheet. And you've, you've got to understand that this is vitally important come the back end of the season, keeping clean sheets, not not conceding many goals, because it does always count come the back end of the season. Um, like I say, that, that really impressed me, the fact that how solid we looked with, with Sirkin and, and Luke 0-9. 9 with some amazing defending there, lad. Well done. And Bart in the middle of the, th of the three in the, at the back. 0-9... This is the thing with 9 Obviously, the player himself would prefer to play in the midfield. But how can you put him in the midfield when he's playing so well in defence? So much so, he's keeping Bailey right out the team. That's how well 0 9 doing at the back. And last night on our match vlog, what we did, I got some really good footage of Luke 9 celebrating the fact that he cleared the ball into touch and he didn't allow the Rotherham players in. And he'd done that numerous times. Even his heading, header, headering was really good last night. So, credit to Luke 9 for doing a job at centre-back. But like I say, it was an outstanding team performance. Gucci's energy levels were second and on last night. He was getting up and down that wing like a man possessed. He's tracking back, he's defensive duties. He done everything right last night, uh, Gooch did. And Jack Clark as well. My God, we've got some player on our hands. I'm telling you now. I watched the game back last night. And he's ball control. He's skill on the ball. It's unbelievable the way he just dribbles the ball past one, past two, past three. It's it's outstanding. And he took his goal really well. And not only that, he improved from last season where he just wanted to impress last season. And he did try and beat the man one too many times. But today, last night and this and this season, he's been delivering the ball in the box. And he got down the ball for the Stewart's second goal. And he crossed the ball and he's right outside of his right foot. They kicked it that way on it. Oh my God, what a cross. What technique it showed to pull that off. And now we're Stuart to smash it away. Um, last night, someone commented and said, um, it was a fair point to be honest. He said, Sims, with watching Stuart and, and Stuart's work rate, is he outworking Sims? And I, to, to, I replied to, I just think they've got a really good understanding. Um, Ross Stuart, we know what he's about. He's got, he, he does a lot. He, he doesn't just cover the front line, he, he comes back and defends, set pieces, corners, free kicks. He does a lot, a lot of work. Where Sims is a, like, he just stays up front, basically, and that's good. We're playing two up top. And I think they've got to understand them together because they're always looking for each other. When the ball's getting pumped up, Sims has a quick look around to see where, where Stewart's going to be because Stewart's always on the run, he's always on the move, he's a, he'll be a nightmare to defend against. And I feel as if last night, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Sims just staying up top and when the ball was getting pumped up, he was looking for Stewart and he was laying him off. And I, I, do, understand, I do believe that it's just an understanding between the two. I'll do all the, a lot of donkey work as well as the work, in, like work up front as well. And Sims is just there waiting for that counter-attack. So I, that's how I feel, is it? But it was a fair point what the lad said. But looking at like on an overall last night, we've got to tie Stewart down to a contract. We cannot let this roll on any longer. Give him a bigger contract. Um, but they, they, this has always come to bite us in the arse. We'll, we'll let a, con uh, a player run down his contract and then he ends up leaving for now. Stewart is so crucial to this Sunderland team. He is. He was last season and now he is this season. He's, he's probably our best player in my opinion and we need, well he's our goal scorer at the minute and we need him tying down to a lengthy contract at Sunderland. Hopefully we can get it done sooner rather than later. But moving on to the three kids who come in, listen to, the, listen to these, right? Listen to this. I'll talk about the Manchester United player who we've got first, Ahmed Diallo. He was he started his career at Atlanta. He's an Ivory Coast international, so it's another international we've got at the club. And this play, Manchester United only recently paid 
25 million euros for him, rising to 40 million. And he, uh, I think last season he, play, he played on loan at Rangers. But we've got some player. He's, like, like I say, Speakman and the board, they're gone for young, talented players. And you didn't just become a Man United player and, a, and an Ivory Coast international for no reason. He's obviously got talent there. And hopefully now, with these players coming in, we're starting to get a bit depth. So when the likes of Jack Clark, uh, you know, are starting to feel it a little bit in the legs and they need a rest and they needed a little bit of time out the team, these players can just drop in and come straight in and, and crack on still. That's that's the, the um, that's what I'm absolutely loving about it. And also we've got, came through the door, was Mitchell as well. The PSG player, he's played eight times for PSG. So he's, need, he's, he's you know what I mean, he, he's highly rated, highly thought on. And also he's a French, French international alongside Bar, who, to be honest, Bar and Ahmad, I didn't think them two would be announced last night. I didn't even know they were at Sunderland Club. None of us did. It was a surprise to all of us. Yes, we were understand they were in talks, but we didn't realise they were going to get announced. So it was a, a nice surprise at half-time, to say the least. But like I say, the um, Bar, I, I don't really know much about Bar, but he's a French international. He plays alongside Mitchell. So them two will help each other settle down. They're not going to feel homesick because there's two of them together. Obviously, they can... You know, keep each other company, basically. But no, we're starting to get strength in depth now, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, like I say, a couple of maybe one, maybe one or two full backs extra just for cover, and another striker. I know Ahmad can play as as a striker, but he's predominantly a winger. So for me, I would still like another striker, like who can just come in when needed be, because we're obviously playing Stewart and Sims from now on. Like I can see it being a two up top from the rest of the season. So hopefully if they did a, if it, for instance if they get an injury, sorry, we're gonna still have another man on the bench who can come straight into the team. Remember everybody to hit the thumbs up, go and watch our match vlog and tell us what you think in the comment section. And uh, I subscribe if you're new. See you in a bit.